fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. One, two, three. When the dreaded Chief Black Hawk fled from an Indian reservation, he took with him nearly a hundred Apaches. A mission-educated Indian named White Crow helped to plan the flight. White Crow rode beside the Chief, and as Black Hawk signaled a halt, White Crow leaned forward on his spotted pony and said, Uh, Ahead of us in Gordon's Valley, ranch a first white man who might report our march, Chief Blackhawk. All white men in the path of Blackhawk die. We shoot fire arrows to burn white man's house. Then if white man runs from house to escape flames, we shoot him. Good. You give command, Chief Blackhawk. Malaga! Malaga! The Indians rode into the valley to surround the log house. Then, taking cover behind rocks and trees, they shot fire arrows at the building. Soon it was a mass of flames. The renegades watched for the occupants to show themselves. When no one appeared, White Crow murmured, The fire do work well. We watch to make sure. As the walls of the ranch house collapsed, Black Hawk was satisfied that no one inside the building could survive. The Apaches mounted and rode away from the valley. Early the next morning, the Lone Ranger and Toto rode into Gordon's Valley. As they dismounted beside the ranch house ruins, the masked man said, Look at the tracks, Toto. Them tracks. Indian pony. Yes. Black Hawk and his men set fire to that ranch house. Him want make sure no one lived to tell soldier where to find them. Well, there's nothing we can do here. We go on, follow Black Take, Black Hawk. Yes, Toto, but first we're going... Look, Himasabi, look. Horse wagon come this way. And the girl are in that buckboard. And them see us. Color aim shotgun. Get your hands up! They've got the ranch house. We'll pay for it, Mary. Toto, 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 Toto. Mister, I'll kill you and that engine so full of buckshot. Is this your land? Yes, and that was our house. You dirty pack trailing polecat. You must be Chris Gordon. That's my name. 
And I aim to make sure you and that redskin don't live to burn down any more ranch houses. Todd and I didn't burn your house, Gordon. We're trailing the renegades who did. Lion won't save your hides. Look at the tracks, man. Dad, he's right. Those are hoof prints of Indian ponies. That's right, Miss Gordon. Black Hawk and his renegades were here. Black Hawk? I thought that engine was on the reservation. He jumped the reservation, and he has nearly a hundred Apaches with him. You and your daughter were fortunate you weren't here to meet them. We left to go into town several days ago. Dad ordered a few pieces of furniture from the east, so we went to the railroad station to get them. The trip saved your lives. Why? Why did they burn the house? They probably thought you were inside. They wanted to silence anyone who might report their line of march. Now, lower that shotgun, Gordon. Hey. I'm sorry I misjudged you, mister. When I saw your mask, I figured you and that engine had robbed us and set fire to the place. My mask doesn't mean I'm an outlaw. Tell me, do you know the commanding officer at Fort Blanchard? I've met the colonel. Does he know you? No, but I know a scout who works for him. Gordon, I suggest you and your daughter go to the fort. You'll be safe there. Well, we've no choice. We'll have to go to the fort. Do you think Black Hawk is still in this part of the country? Of course he's in this part of the country, Mary. Hasn't had time to get away yet. Soon as the army learns that he's loose, they'll go looking for him. Toto and I'll ride to the fort with you, Gordon. In case of trouble, our guns will be useful. Thanks, mister. Get up that Easy. Get up, Come on, sir. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. Late that afternoon, the Lone Ranger, Tonto, Chris Gordon, and his daughter Mary sighted Fort Blanchard. The party drew rain at the edge of a stand of timber. Tonto, my mask will arouse too much curiosity in the fort. I'll wait for you here. Ah, me savvy. You and Gordon will be able to give Colonel Wilcox all the information we have about Black Hawk. The Colonel will probably send troopers out to look for that redskin. I hope he does. Oh, uh, give my regards to Johnny Rolfe, Tonto. Ah. We see you later, Kimosabe. Adios, mister. And thank you. You're welcome, Miss Mary. Get him up, Count. After reporting to Colonel Wilcox, Chris Gordon, Mary, and Tonto left the Commandant's office. While Chris drove the wagon to the stable, Mary and Tonto waited for him in the parade ground of the fort. Suddenly, Tonto heard a familiar shout. Tonto! Here. It was Johnny Rolfe, a young civilian scout. Toto introduced Mary and Johnny, then explained the circumstances that brought him to the fort. A mask, friend, say, give you regards, Johnny. <laughs> Where is he, Toto? Well, him not far away. Me go join him now. Well, I'd like to see him. Well, him not stay around here long. We go trail Black Hawk. Yeah, nobody in this part of the country will be safe with that Apache on the loose. It was Black Hawk who burned our ranch house. Yeah, you're lucky to be here to tell about it, Miss Mary. Adios, Johnny. Uh, so long, Tano. Remember me to your mass friend. Uh-huh. Me do it. Uh, Mr. Rowe. Uh, please call me Johnny, ma'am. Very well, then, Johnny. Do you know the masked man? Well, I don't know his name, ma'am, but I'm mighty proud that I do know him. Why does the law want him? <laughs> All the law wants of him is help, ma'am. He's not an outlaw. Then why does he help? I reckon you haven't been in the West long. I've been in school in the East, but I've been in the West long enough to know that when a man wears a mask, he... <laughs> ma'am, that masked man's called the Lone Ranger. What? The Lone Ranger? He's done more to help bring law to the West than any other man I know. Johnny, I was I saw a wagon into the fort. Oh. And I also saw an Indian. What about it, Lieutenant? Well, I... Uh, do you mind if I join you? Of course not, Lieutenant. Uh, thank you, Miss... Uh, uh, Miss... Miss Mary Gordon from Gordon's Valley. Miss Mary, this is Lieutenant Henry Coates. How do you do? I'm delighted, Miss Mary. I hope you're satisfied, Lieutenant. Huh? Huh? You know, doggone well, the only reason you came over here was to meet Miss Mary. Now that you've met her, clear out. I apologize for Johnny's lack of manners, Miss Gordon. The army seems to think cowboy scouts are necessary in this part of the country. Man, but... Why, you know... Mr. Mr. Rolf, Johnny, please. Uh, all right, Miss Mary. I'll not hit the dude. I wish you'd try it, cowboy. If and when I do, you'll think you got caught in the middle of a stampede. If? When? What's the matter, Rolf? Are you afraid? Of you? Well, listen, you brass plate. Please don't start an argument. Miss Gordon's right, Rolf. 
We should settle our differences elsewhere. I'll settle them any time, any place. What's wrong with you two? Nothing to worry about, Miss Gordon. It's just that Johnny holds my West Point commission against me. There's a whole lot more than that against you. However, the Army sent me here to do a job, and I propose to do it. In spite of the opposition of civilian scouts. A fat lot of good your kind of soldiering is here. We need engine fighters, not parade ground dudes. Rolf, if you were in uniform... If I were, you'd throw your rank around. Rolf, As it is, I'm not... Johnny Rolf! Yeah, what is it, Sergeant? Colonel Wilcox wants to see in his office. All right. Miss Mary... Don't worry me. about me, Johnny. I'll go join my father. I'll walk with you if I may, Miss Mary. Very well, Lieutenant. I'll see you later, Miss Mary. What part of the East are you from, Miss Mary? Huh. When Johnny Rolf entered the Commandant's office, Colonel Wilcox looked at him sharply and asked, What's eating you, Johnny? Ah, uh, that West Point. Lieutenant. You and Coates have been feuding ever since he arrived. I know, Colonel, but I Johnny, can't... Johnny, Coates will make a good officer one of these days. Huh. Meantime, you have a job to do. I've just had bad news. Hmm? What, Black Hawk? Yes. I verified the report Gordon and the Indian named Tonto brought in. I telegraphed Fort Fraser and learned that Black Hawk has jumped the reservation. He took about a hundred renegades with him. Where do you figure they're hidden? <laughs> Who knows? The Canadian border may be their destination. Yeah, maybe so. They might be planning to join Sitting Bull. Or they may remain in this part of the country, mm. harassing settlers and plundering towns. They've already secured rifles and ammunition enough to arm themselves. That makes them even more dangerous. I'm sending Troop D after them. Good, good. Lieutenant Coates will be in command but, of the troopers. But Coates is no engine fighter. That's why you're going with him. Me? Yes. You'll be able to trail Black Hawk. Yeah, but Colonel, why I do I have... I expect you to give Coates the same cooperation you give me. Oh, Colonel, now... I'm just counting on you, Johnny. Uh, all right, Colonel. I'll do my best. Meanwhile, Tonto joined his masked friend and reported what had happened at the fort. Colonel Wilcox say him telegraph Fort Fraser about Black Hawk. They'll notify him that Black Hawk jumped the reservation. And then him send troopers after Apache. Is uh, Johnny Rolfe still scouting for Colonel Wilcox? Ah, me see him at fort. Him ask me... Say hello to you. Uh, he's a good man. Uh, while I waited for you, I did some scouting, Tonto. Oh, what you learn? I picked up Black Hawk's trail east of here. Uh, then troopers have no trouble finding Apache tracks. Yes, but those tracks may lead to a trap. Oh, what you mean? The Apaches will scout their back trail as well as the country ahead. If they sight the troopers, they may plan an ambush. Oh, and what we do? We'll follow Black Hawk. Easy, easy, scout, easy, fella. Come on, Phil. Get him up, scout. At sundown that night, the troopers pursuing Black Hawk were deep in Medicine Hills. Riding beside Lieutenant Coates, Johnny Rolfe studied the ground sharply. No sign of the Apaches yet, Rolfe. Yeah, there are the tracks of their ponies. I don't see any tracks. There's lots of signs for anyone used to reading them. We're on the right trail, Lieutenant. Good. We'll make camp for the night and continue the pursuit in the morning. I wouldn't advise camping in these hills. Your advice is welcome, but I'm in command. Yeah, yeah, but you don't owe Apaches. I know we're heading for a fight. If the men rest tonight, they'll be fresh in the morning. That might be what the book says, Lieutenant, but Injuns can't read. That's enough, Rolf. Sergeant Murphy. Yes, sir. We'll camp near the creek ahead. Right, sir. After dark that night, Johnny Rolfe lay in his blanket, staring sleeplessly at the clouds drifting across the face of the moon. He was restless and uneasy. No scout could sleep in hostile country, wondering when and how soon an enemy, as furtive as the Apaches, might strike. Finally, he tossed his blanket aside and moved away from the sleeping soldiers. As he strode to the place where his horse was tethered, he checked his guns carefully. Then he saddled his big gray and guided the animal away from the camp. Come on, get him. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Paul to continue. Johnny was making his way cautiously uphill when he heard hoofbeats behind him. What the... Oh, 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 oh. He brought his horse to a halt and waited until the rider came into view. As soon as he saw the horseman, he exclaimed, Lieutenant Coach. Oh, oh. What's the idea, Lieutenant? I saw you leave camp. Well, what about it? Where are you going? To look for Apaches. And you're doggone lucky I didn't mistake you for one. If those savages were camped nearby, we'd know it. If you were sure of that, you'd be back in camp, and so would I. All right, Johnny. I admit I'm uneasy. Let's look around. My horse is trained to move quietly. You'd better do as much as possible to guide yours over ground, little muffless hoofbeats. Right. Come on. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Tonto were also scouting the hills. They had found the Apache camp and were on their way to report to the troopers when suddenly... Hey, Mustafi, look! Tonto pointed to Johnny and the lieutenant a short distance away. But the masked man was looking at two Apaches who were watching the two riders so intently that they failed to notice him and Tonto. Tonto, those Apaches have seen Johnny draw from the man with him. Oh, sir. Oh, 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 easy. Set him up. What do we do? He's got easy, Creep up behind the Indians and take them by surprise. As silently as shadows, the masked man and Tonto crept toward the Apaches. The Braves were reaching for their bows when the Lone Ranger leaped at one and shouted, Now, Tonto! Oh, no, the surprised Apaches whirled to face an attack. But they were too late to act. The Lone Ranger's arm gripped one of the warriors around the throat. Tonto closed with the other. As Johnny and the lieutenant drew their horses to a halt, the young officer drew his gun. The Lone Ranger's voice was sharp as he commanded. Fire that gun and you'll never live to see another sunrise. Huh? He's right, Lieutenant. Most of your hard work, use your fists. Uh, no need for fists now. Apache is unconscious. Uh, what's going on here? These Indians were about to fire a couple of arrows at you. Oh, uh, thanks, mister. This is the second time you saved my hide. Are the rest of the Apaches camp nearby? Yes. They're about a mile from here in a well-guarded valley. Uh, so that's why you warned me against gunplay. The sound of a gunshot would be heard in their camp. Johnny, will you help Tonto tie these two braves? Sure, sure thing, mister. I'll give you a hand there, Tonto. Uh, now, what's the meaning of this, Johnny? Do you know this masked outlaw? I'm not an outlaw. But even if I were, this is no time to argue with a man on your side in this fight. But Mr. If... meet Lieutenant Henry Coates. He's in command of the troopers. In that case, Lieutenant, you'll be interested in what Tonto and I learned. The Apache's camp is one that may be easily surrounded. You said it was well guarded. It is. But the guards can be silenced. Hey, I said your scheme... Once the Redskins are surrounded, they'll have to surrender. They'll put up a fight, but the troopers will be able to stop their escape. The men aren't moving until I see where the Apaches are camped. But, Lieutenant, you can't... This do... masked man may lead us into a trap. You're local, Lieutenant. He saved our lives. He's masked. Of course he's masked. He's the Lone Ranger. I never heard of the Lone Ranger. Never heard of him. Why, you not... Steady, Johnny, steady. I'll take the Lieutenant to a place where he'll be able to see the Apaches for himself. I intend to see them before I give my men a command to march. Of all the local junkheads I ever met. Pato. Well, you stay here and guard the prisoners. Uh, me watch them, Kim. Good. All right, we'll head for the Apache's camp. Easy, steady, big Steady, boy. Come on. Come on. Yeah, yeah. As they mounted and rode away, the Lone Ranger, Johnny, and Lieutenant Coates didn't know that two other Apache scouts had been watching them. They had been there while their comrades were tied and gagged. And after holding a whispered conference, they moved forward with extreme caution. Tonto heard a twig snap behind him, but as he turned, an Apache brought a rifle butt down sharply on his head. Oh. In a few minutes, the captives were free. They explained what happened. Mask man, soldier, one other fellow on way to Apache camp. Then army come to attack. Where are army camp? Me not know. Maybe this Indian have answer. What his name? Me here, mask man, call him Tonto. We take Tonto to Black Hawk. Red Bear, mother, go out to three white men, capture him, then bring him to village. Oh. Oh. A short time later, the Lone Ranger signaled a halt on the side of a thickly wooded slope. Who's it? Oh, 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 oh. Uh, we'd better leave the horses here. We'll go uphill on foot. Where's that trail below us lead? Looks to me like it leads right straight to the gap ahead. Yes, it does, Johnny. Beyond the gap is Black Hawk's camp. You'll be able to see it from the top of this hill. So he's camped in a valley, huh? The valley's wall was solid rock. There's water there and good grazing for the Indian ponies. I'll take my lariat with me. I might need it. Lookouts may be stationed at the top of the slope. 
From here on, we'll have to move cautiously. Lead the way. The three men were nearing the crest of the hill when they heard hoofbeats on the trail below. What the... They turned and saw two Indians approaching along the moonlit trail. Tonto was with them. He's been captured. His hands and feet are free. Maybe he can make a break. Johnny, look out! What's... As Lieutenant Coach shouted a warning, Johnny whirled just in time to escape the knife of an Apache warrior who had been following them. Johnny grabbed the Indian as the other appeared. Drop that knife, Here Indian! Here comes the other one! I'll give you a hand. We'll deal with these two. And I'll go help Tonto. <laughs> Several hard blows stopped the two Indians. They dropped their weapons and raced downhill to escape the fight. The pool cats are getting away. Let them go. Without weapons, they'll not make any more trouble. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger hurried toward a place that overlooked the narrow trail leading to Black Hawk's camp. The gap was walled by rock, and as the masked man stood on the ledge, he realized that gunfire would alert the renegades in the valley. He still held his lariat. He uncoiled it, and as the Indians reached a spot on the trail directly beneath him, he dropped a wide loop. It caught the two Apaches, pulling them off their ponies. As they spilled to the ground, Toto seized the chance to escape. He wheeled Scout sharply and raced away. By the time the Apaches freed themselves from the rope, Toto was out of sight, and the Lone Ranger was nowhere to be seen on the ledge above. We go left a fellow with a rope. Oh, it's better we go warn Black Hawk about enemies near camp. Keeping to the shadow of the trees, Toto guided Scout uphill. A few minutes later, he joined the Lone Ranger, Johnny, and the Lieutenant at the top of the slope. Oh, Scout, oh, brother. Oh, me know your plan bring Johnny and Lieutenant here. Me know you see Apache right along trail below. You wouldn't have had a chance of getting out of Black Hawk's camp alive, Tonto. Me know that. Me sorry prisoners escape. But two other Scouts, come look for them. I understand, Toto. Now, them fellow go to camp. Sound alarm. Uh, take a look at their camp. You can see it from here. They've already sounded an alarm. Here goes our chance to surround and capture those redskins. Oh, they're heading for their ponies. Sure. They'll clear out of that valley. Mister, you've scouted this country thoroughly. What's at the other end of that valley? A blind canyon, Lieutenant. Then the only way out of the valley is through the gap below us. Right. Well, what's to stop us from keeping them in there? There's nearly a hundred renegades in that valley. Todd and I'll do our best to hold them there while you and the lieutenant go for the troopers, Johnny. Oh, now, hold on. Uh, just a minute. I didn't ask you to take the risk, mister. I offered to take it, lieutenant. Then we'll all stay here. My men will hear the gunfire and come here to investigate. They'll get here faster if they know where to come. Yes, but... There's if... no time for argument, lieutenant. Johnny, you go for the troopers. Oh, no, you don't. I'm a civilian, not a soldier, lieutenant. You can't order me out of here. You're the one to lead the troopers. He's right, lieutenant. Uh, very well. I'll return as quickly as possible. What about you, Johnny? I'm staying with you, mister. I know we're outnumbered, but doggone it, we'll put up a fight. Now let's give those redskins a taste of lead. Right. At first, the surprised Apaches returned the fire. Then they retreated to the far end of the valley to consider the situation. In the moonlight, the Lone Ranger, Johnny and Tonto, could see Black Hawk giving orders. They're out of revolver range and I don't have my rifle. Black Hawk, point this way. He's probably giving orders to rush the gap. I think you're right, mister. Black Hawk knows we'll be able to drop a few of his men, but he likewise knows we can't stop them all. Apache, start charge, Kimasabi. Oh, I'd sure welcome the sight of that West Point lieutenant right now. Here they come. Now listen to them, yeah. They're heading for the gap. Yeah, and they're shooting as they come. They're in shooting range again. Open fire. All three of the men on the slope triggered their guns, but each one knew it would be impossible to halt the frenzied charge of the Apaches. The hard-riding warriors were approaching the valley entrance when an army bugle sounded. It's the army! And look who's leading the soldiers! Lieutenant Coates! Look at him, travel! Soldiers reach entrance to the valley! Those redskins are trapped! The fighting was hand-to-hand. Two painted braves rushed toward Lieutenant Coates, but Johnny saw them and fired. I got him! Toto and the Lone Ranger were also covering the troopers. The combination of the soldiers in the valley and the devastating fire from the slope was too much for the Apaches. Those who had not been wounded surrendered. Daylight was breaking when the troopers were ready to start the return trip to Fort Blanchard with the Apaches in custody. 
Lieutenant Coates turned to the Lone Ranger. Mister, you're welcome to return to the fort with us. Thanks, Lieutenant, but Tonto and I are heading south. I'm glad your mission is accomplished. We might have accomplished it with less difficulty if I'd listened to you in the first place. I'm sorry I doubted you when you told me you found Blackhawk's camp. Well, that's all right, Lieutenant. The Army's indebted to you for the help you gave us. I'm glad we were able to help you. Adios, Johnny. So long, mister. And thanks. You're welcome. Easy, steady, big fellow. Come on, Toto. Be ready, Kimosami. Monsoon! Get him up! Oh. Johnny, I also owe you an apology. Huh? For what? For refusing to believe you when you said that man was not an outlaw. <laughs> Forget it. You'll have a mighty fine report to make when we get back to the fort. You know, you turned out to be quite an engine fighter, Lieutenant. <laughs> uh, thanks, Johnny. That's a big compliment. Coming from a friend of the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by...